a virgin she wasn't even she was just still planning her wedding she had not even gotten married not to talk of giving birth to a child but god had a new plan a new agenda a new testimony a new song praise the name of the lord
study of RCCG Glory Worship Center, 322 Muritala Mohamed Way, Yaba, Lagos. My name is Victor Ayola and today I'll be talking to you on walking with God. Walking with God. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate you because of your unflinching love towards us. Father, thank you because of the Congress and because of what you have taught us about how to fly with God. As we go into your word on working with God today, we pray, Lord God, that you will indeed hold our hands, Lord God, and help us to work with you in Jesus' name. And at the end of the day, help us, Lord, to be able to make it with you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Working with God. It's been great. We've been talking about flying, but we all know that there are stages in life. When a child is born, the first thing that happens is that that child is not able to do anything himself. At that time, the, the mother or the father carries the child everywhere. And then the child begins to crawl. And then the child begins to walk. And then the child learns how to jump or to run and maybe 
we can then begin to talk about working. So today we want to talk about working with God. It's going to be very brief. It's just to tell us this message, and this is the message, that before you can fly with God, you need to learn to work with God. Only those who have worked with God can then fly with God. And we have many examples in the scripture. So I will just be going through a few rules that can help us to work with God. I will just be going through a few rules, guidelines that can help us to work with God. The first rule is that when you want to work with God, you work in agreement. You work in agreement. According to Amos chapter 3, verse 3, Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Can two work together unless they are agreed? Can two work together unless they are agreed? It is not possible to work with God unless you agree with Him. And what agreement do you need to make with God? The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You need to agree with God that you don't want to perish so that you can have that everlasting life. That's the point that we are going to come back to. The second thing is that when you want to work with God, you need to work in faith. You need to work in faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. I repeat, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 37. All tell us the same thing. That the just shall live by faith. Let's quote it from the original text, which is Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. It says, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. If you want to walk with God, you have to walk with faith. You have to walk with faith. It is not possible for you to walk with God without faith. In fact, the Bible tells us that without faith, no man can please God. So you cannot walk with God in a pleasing way without having faith. The third thing about working with God in faith. It's working with God in trust. You know, there's a, there's a difference between faith and trust. I know we all like to talk about big faith and the rest, but there is nothing more like an absolute trust in God. You know, if, if you check the book of Daniel chapter 3, you see the instance where the Hebrew children were being thrown into fire. When they were being thrown into the fire, it was not faith that got them there. It was trust. They said, even if our God, they said our God is able to save us, that is faith. They now added that even if he does not save us, let it be known to you, O king, we will not worship your idol. We will not bow down to your idol. That is trust. Trusting God that whether it is good or it is right out or it is wrong outcome, I am ready for all that is bringing my way. I am trusting God that he has shown me the way. I may not, he may not show me everything that will lead me to that way, but I am sure that he will take me to the destination. That is trust. It is trust to know that there may be forces on the way. There may be lions on the way, but God that has promised will take me to his destination. So you need to walk with God in trust. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 tells us that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. An enemy of trust is our understanding. We understand the way the world works. We understand that before you can be promoted, you need to suck up to somebody. We understand that you need to make human connections. But God says, lean not on your own understanding. Walk in trust. Verses of that place says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I may not know the answer from the beginning to the end, but I know that whatever God has said concerning my life, it shall be established. A fourth point is that you need to walk in love. 
We need to walk in love. What does it mean to walk in love? You know, a person that describes what it means to love God to me in a way that I really, really understood was a pastor, the, the, the pastor of RCCG in UK. And he simply puts it this way. He says, to desire God simply means the, that kind of feeling that you have when you have nice ice cream on a, on a hot summer day. You know, when somebody brings you ice cream, that thing that makes you to delight, that excitement that you have, wow, it's so hot. You have that ice cream, you are longing for it, you are looking forward to it. That is what it means to be excited about God. That is what it means to love God. And that is why the Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, the Bible says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That is what it means to love God. You must walk in love. The number five way to walk with God is you must walk in obedience. You must walk with in obedience. John chapter 10 verse 27 to 30. John chapter 10 verse 27 to 30 clearly states, Jesus said there, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. I and my father are one. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You cannot walk with God without hearing his voice. You cannot walk with God without obeying his voice. God knows you when you obey his voice, when you are able and willing to do everything that he has said that you should do. So you need to walk in obedience. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 makes it very, very clear. It says it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. If you read the rest of that chapter, you will see the many blessings that come with obedience. There are so many blessings that come with obedience, including you'll be heard and not still. All the promises that God has promised for your life, they will be fulfilled. And of course, being above, you'll be heard above all nations means that you will fly higher than other people. So you need to walk in obedience. Apart from walking in obedience, there is something that is important. We are in an era where everybody is saying, walk in wisdom, walk in wisdom. Yes, you need to walk with wisdom. God does not want foolish children. He does, he's not looking forward to us stupid children. But wisdom to God is not the wisdom of pranks. It's not the wisdom of dishonesty. Today, people will steal. People will deceive and they will call it wisdom. What exactly did the Bible say? You need to walk in truth and in integrity. We need to walk in truth and in integrity. Third John verse one, chapter, third John chapter one verse four. Third John chapter one verse four says, "I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth." They must walk in truth. Why is it important for you to walk in truth? Jesus Christ that we are serving says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. If you want to walk with the person whose name is the truth, then you need to be able to walk in truth. Another factor is that we must be willing to work with zeal and passion. We should, we should work in zeal and passion. The Bible talks about David as a man after God. There is, that is something that God loves about, uh, about David, that is a man after God's heart. But let us hear from the mouth of David, one of the things that draws God to the heart of God. Psalm 69 verse 9 it says, Because the zeal for your house has eaten me up. He is very zealous for the things of God. David is very, very zealous for the things of God. 
So you need to work in zeal. It's not you shouldn't be the one that when they are when they are looking for how to move the work of God forward, you are always looking for an excuse not to. We need to move with zeal for God. You know, there used to be a song when I was growing up. It says that what is your work for God? They said you should contribute money. You said you are not contributing. They said you should come and evangelize. You say you are not evangelizing. We, we, we call you for this, we call you for that. You say that on the day of judgment, we are going to be asking, what is your work for the Lord? You need to work with God with zeal. What is it that you want to do for God in the year that we are going into? It's not just about throwing things to God and say, God, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. What will you as an individual do for God that will make a difference in your life? Number eight point is that you need to work in perfection. You need to work in perfection. Every other work that you do for God, every working with God comes to nothing if you are not aiming and working actively towards perfection with God. In fact, in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, it says, When Abraham was 90 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. God wants you to walk before him and to be blameless. And that is one of the ways to walk with God. Our number, our final point is that when you are walking with God, the Bible says that you should not have any other God apart from him. In other words, you must flee from idols. You must flee from idols. First John chapter 5, verse 21 is where we are going to put it to an end today. First John 5, 21 says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So, we have seen how to work with God. You need to keep yourself from idols. You need to work in trust. You need to work in faith. You need to work with zeal. The question is, are you ready to fly? Remember, you cannot fly until you have worked with God. Maybe you are here today. You have not even given your life to Christ. It means you are not even yet ready to crawl. Because remember, we have said, can two work together except they agree? The first thing you need to do is to work in agreement with him. And the Bible makes it very clear to us that the reason God came in the form of Jesus is so that no one will perish. So I'm inviting you today. Why not call upon Jesus today to save your soul? You will see some numbers scrolling on the screen. You can call that number and there will be somebody there that will join hands with you and pray with you and help you to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. The Lord Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we just want to say thank you again for this grace and for this privilege and opportunity to walk before you today, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, you will hold our hands as we walk with you and you will guide us, Lord God, so that we will not stumble, so that we will not fall. For in Jesus' name we pray. And for that person that has given their life today after listening to this, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will hold them to the end. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks be to God for this great worship service today, and I believe you have been tremendously blessed. I pray that your blessings multiply exceedingly in Jesus' mighty name. I want to encourage you to give an offering to God, for God loves a cheerful giver. To give your offering, pay your tithes, your pledges, or support the work of God in Glory Worship Center, please visit us online at www rccggwc.org Click on giving and follow the process. Alternatively, you can do a direct transfer from your phone or tablet to the church's GTB account number 0010425841. Please indicate the type of offering with an appropriate narration. God bless you as you give. We invite you to also join us online at any of our services through our website www.rccggwc.org and join us on Sundays for our celebration service which we title Clouds of Glory Service. On Tuesdays, you can join us at 6.30pm for our Digging Deep service which is our Bible study service. And on Thursday at 6.30pm, and join us for our faith clinic 
service, which is our prayer service. God bless you as you come. We encourage you to join us every first Tuesday of the month at 6.30 a.m. for a special one-hour prayer service titled Divine Intervention Service. It is conducted by Pastor Peter Olawale, a special assistant to the RCCG General Overseer on prayer. You will be mightily blessed as you join the services. God bless you mightily. You can reach us on any of the telephone numbers calling on the screen for counseling, prayers, or help. God bless you as you do so. Shall we pray? I pray that the word of God you have heard today profits you continually in Jesus' name. The presence of God will abide with you always. Signs and wonders will always be your portion in Jesus' name. The Lord accept your offerings and reward you abundantly. And may you continue to shine brightly in Jesus' mighty name. Until the next time you join us, keep basking in God's glory.